red meat has been demonized throughout history. But is it really so simple to say that all meats are bad? Today, we're going to explore the tricky truth about red meat, including some that you should definitely stay away from, tips for healthier meat options, as well as some unexpected culprits, foods which have been promoted as healthy but actually cause heart attacks. Plus, stick around until the end as we've got two free gifts that will help you fight heart disease naturally. And remember to click the thumbs up and subscribe button to stay up to date with our latest videos. Meat can be a valuable fuel when consumed thoughtfully. Rich in protein, iron, zinc, and B vitamins, it delivers essential nutrients that are less available in plant-based foods. Does that mean that all meat is good? Definitely not. But it's important to understand why meat was turned into a villain, as well as understanding that meat can be good and bad for your health, depending on a few factors. The diet heart hypothesis suggests that saturated fats raise cholesterol levels, which in turn increases the risk of coronary heart disease. This idea was first introduced by Ansel Keys, an American physiologist who ran the famous Seven Countries study. This study, conducted in the 1950s, investigated the relationship between diet and coronary heart disease, concluding that saturated fats are the primary culprit in heart disease. This study is extremely important, as it's the foundation of official guidelines that we live with today. Ansel Keys was a particularly domineering personality and managed to shape government guidelines, condemning meat and instead promoting the toxic foods that are actually responsible for today's heart disease epidemic. Keys originally had data from 22 countries, but chose only seven that fit his hypothesis. If a country had high meat consumption, but didn't have high rates of heart disease, it was left out. We'll get to another major problem in a second. But the fact is that Ansel Keys cherry-picked data to prove his point, and attacked anyone who challenged him. This ultimately led to the normalization of toxic foods that many of us eat today, like refined grains and sugar, which have rigorous science showing that they cause disease. Beyond cherry-picking of data, a big problem was that the Seven Countries study was observational, and observational studies can be useful, but they can also attribute causation where there is none. Saying that meat causes heart disease based on the Seven Countries study is like saying that umbrellas cause rain, because every time it rains, people have umbrellas. It's mistaking correlation for causation. On the other hand, in 1989, a paper was quietly published stating that replacing saturated fats with unsaturated fats did not lower the risk of coronary heart disease or death. This study involved 9,423 participants living in mental hospitals, with results drastically contradicting the popular diet-heart hypothesis. However, that didn't deter the low-fat anti-meat movement. Because patients were living in a state institution, it meant that meal preparation and dietary intake could be rigorously controlled. This was the single largest controlled experiment in history testing the idea. In fact, it would be impossible to run a similar long-term trial today due to ethical considerations. And the results clearly contradict the hypothesis that all saturated fat causes heart disease. Researchers found that although substituting saturated fats did lower cholesterol by an average of 14%, it had an alarming consequence. The risk of dying increased by 22% for every 30 point fall in cholesterol. This finding has been replicated in a number of studies, including the 2014 study by Dr. Rajiv Chowdhury, who analyzed 78 studies concluding that reducing saturated fats didn't reduce cardiovascular disease risk. But what are the upsides of meat? Can meat prevent heart attack? And how can certain meats increase the risk? Protein 
perhaps the most well-known nutrient in meat, is crucial. When you exercise, your muscle tissues suffer tiny tears. Protein helps in repairing these tears, allowing the muscle to grow stronger. Strong muscles improve venous return, making it easier for the heart to pump blood throughout the body. But it's not just about muscles. Proteins are the building blocks for various processes in the body, including immune defense, enzyme function, which breaks down triglycerides and reduces the risk of heart disease, healthy blood clotting, hormone function, and cell signaling to regulate blood pressure. Iron is another crucial nutrient in meat, especially red meat. Iron is a vital component of hemoglobin, the molecule in red blood cells responsible for transporting oxygen throughout the body. An iron deficiency can lead to anemia, which results in fatigue, weakness, and a compromised immune system. Iron from animal sources, known as heme iron, is also more easily absorbed by the body compared to non-heme iron from plant sources. Zinc is essential to protect against pathogens. It also plays a role in cell division and DNA synthesis. A deficiency in zinc can result in a weakened immune response and even impair your sense of taste and smell. B vitamins including B6, B12, niacin, and riboflavin are essential for the central nervous system, brain development, and converting food into energy. Omega-3 fatty acids and vitamin D are two more critical nutrients in meat. Omega-3 fatty acids play a vital role in cell membrane structure and have anti-inflammatory properties. Vitamin D, often referred to as the sunshine vitamin, is also present in fatty fish as well as in smaller amounts in beef liver and egg yolks. Vitamin D is essential for bone health as it helps the body absorb calcium. A deficiency in vitamin D can lead to brittle bone conditions like osteoporosis and rickets. For those who live in regions with limited sunlight, obtaining vitamin D from dietary sources becomes even more important. Vitamin K2 is a nutrient that doesn't get as much attention as some other vitamins, but it's increasingly recognized for its crucial role for heart health. It's found in animal products like cheese, liver, and dark chicken meat. One of the most significant functions of vitamin K2 is its role in directing calcium to the bones, thus preventing calcium buildup in the arteries, one of the major contributors to heart attack. Vitamin K2 works synergistically with vitamin D and A, and is one of the most important vitamins for anyone at risk for heart disease. Interesting data can be found in populations whose diets underwent rapid transformations, such as the Maasai people from Kenya, who lived mainly off meat and milk, until the British reduced cattle grazing areas and transitioned their diet to maize, grains, and cereals. Researchers estimated that the transition from meat to carbohydrate-based diets equated to around a 60% reduction in fat consumption and a 70% reduction in protein, coinciding with a dramatic increase in diabetes and high blood pressure. Similarly, when Yemenite Jews migrated to Israel, their saturated fat consumption reduced by an estimated 40%. And at the same time, diabetes increased 40-fold. Again, these are observational studies, but they show a unique snapshot of what happens when meat is replaced with carbohydrate-based diets. However, not all meat is made equal. Before we get to the best and worst meats, Heart Disease Code would love to give you a free book, The Surprising Truth About Fat and Cholesterol. Plus, the first episode of the untold story of heart disease. Something that everyone concerned about heart health should watch. Click the link in the description below to claim these free gifts. And could you do us a favor and click the subscribe button below? Okay, let's get back to the video. So, how do you distinguish between healthy meat and unhealthy? It's all about quality. What the animals eat and how it lives. 
Meat from animals that eat grass contains short-chain fatty acids compared to meat from grain-fed animals. These shorter-chain fats are associated with reduced inflammation and a lower risk of heart disease. On the other hand, grain-fed meats tend to have longer-chain fatty acids, which are known to increase inflammation and heart disease. Grass-fed beef, for example, contains higher levels of vitamins and a healthier ratio of short-chain omega-3 fatty acids. And while we don't have randomized controlled trials of people eating grass-fed versus grain-fed meats, we do have an increased number of studies comparing the nutrient profiles of the two groups, such as the 2022 study titled Fatty Acid Composition of Grain and Grass-Fed Beef and Their Nutritional Value and Health Implication which identified that grass-fed beef contains significantly higher levels of heart-healthy omega-3, concluding that grass-fed beef could exert protective effects against a number of diseases, ranging from cancer to cardiovascular disease. The problem with many meat studies is that research has often lumped meat eaters with unhealthy habits, such as smoking, lack of exercise, and poor diet, into a single category. Not to mention the quality of meat. Do you think people who eat cheeseburgers as their main source of meat are going to have the same health outcomes as people who eat high quality steak? Broad sweeping questionnaires undermine the complexities of meat. Fortunately, a first of its kind study compared two groups of health conscious people consisting of 11,000 nutrition focused meat eaters and vegetarians. 57% were meat eaters and 43% were vegetarians. Fascinatingly, after 16 years, the average death rate of both groups was around half as high as the general population consuming a typical Western diet. The study showed that eating meat did not increase risk for heart disease, cancer, or all-cause death in both the health-conscious meat eater and vegetarian groups. Next, a 2018 study asked the question, does the way in which animals are raised affect the health differently in humans? This study compared beef, cheese, eggs, and butter from animals raised under different conditions, such as grass-fed beef versus grain-fed beef, finding that, yes, what the animal eats and how it was raised does make an enormous difference, most notably for reducing inflammation, the highest level trigger of many diseases, including heart disease. So how do you choose healthy meats? Look for grass-fed, pasture-raised organic meats, meaning they've eaten a natural diet and are free to roam and haven't been exposed to hormones, antibiotics, and pesticides that come with industrial grain-fed meat. It's best to stay away from processed meats like salami, hot dogs, and bacon. With a growing body of research noting severe dangers due to the extremely high levels of salt, as well as nitrates and other chemical preservatives, which have been shown to increase blood pressure, damage arteries, and reduce insulin function, all skyrocketing the risk of heart attack. For example, a 2010 Harvard University study found that for every 50 grams per day of processed meats, the risk for cardiovascular disease increases by a staggering 42%. Likewise, other studies have found that processed meats significantly increase the risk of colorectal cancer. So stay away from processed and cheap industrial meats that are grown with corn, antibiotics, and other chemical nasties. And go for high quality organic and grass-fed options wherever you can.